Biomechanics is a field of science that studies the laws of mechanics in relation to movement, as well as the systems in the body responsible for movement. Biomechanics is a sub-study of kinesiology. Whilst functional anatomy is the study of bones and muscles in the body that work simultaneously to create movement, through an analysis of my volleyball performance, it is evident that the hit is my weak specialised movement sequence that is affecting my play. Because of biomechanical weaknesses, the effectiveness of my hit is not maximised. I will also analyse the functional anatomy related to the hit in volleyball and subsequently my weaknesses. Volleyball Australia says that the object of the hit is to either make the ball land in the opposition's court or make it so the opposition is forced into error by not being able to control the ball, thus making their return a non-attacking return. This will be the base of how I judge if my hit is effective or not. I will look at the movement strategy of forcing the opposition to use a free ball or non-attacking return under the principle of play setting up attack. I will be focusing on the two body and movement concepts, which are quality of movement and body awareness. To properly analyse the hit, I first need to understand the subroutine involved in the hit. First is the approach phase, next is the takeoff phase, this is preceded by the contact and finally the follow through. During the takeoff phase of my hit, I'm working the sagittal plane. Through analysis of primary visual data, I can identify that one of my biomechanical weaknesses is stability. In biomechanics, stability is defined as an athlete or object's ability to oppose force that would affect or change the state of equilibrium. It's evident that my line of gravity isn't within my base of support. This makes me unstable. As the further the line of gravity is away from the center of my base of support, the more stability is reduced. This ties in the body and movement concept, body awareness, and particularly the components of balance and stability. Also from the image, it is clear that I have a very small base of support. This makes me less stable as I have less in contact with the ground. This is significant as having less in, having a stable base allows for power to be built from it, as the body's main goal is to keep itself stable. If the body isn't stable, then using larger muscles normally used for power to keep itself upright. Looking at data collected from 10 of my hits, the majority of them were classified as soft and loopy. This would make them ineffective, as they are easy for the opposition to return. Under the body and movement concept's quality of movement, I am not meeting the components of speed and force development. This links to another one of my biomechanical weaknesses, summation of force. My hit is not effective, as it is easy for the opponent to return. One of the reasons for this is that I did not summate much force. I need to summate more force so that I can overcome the contact force of drag force. As according to Newton's first law of motion, it demonstrates that there is an exterior force acted upon the ball, thus making the ball deaccelerate and in turn come to a stop. Currently my hit only uses the extension of the hinge joint in the elbow and gradual extension of the hinge joint in the knee. This means that I am only engaging my bicep as a prime mover with an antagonist of the tricep, as well as using the quadricep as a prime mover and a hamstring as the antagonist. However, the quadricep isn't being maximised to its full potential. To maximise my force, I need to use more synovial joints subsequently in effective order. The force summated should be transferred from the gastrocnemius, vastus lateralis, rectus femoris, vastus medialis, vastus intermedialis, gluteus maximus, rectus abdominis, external obliques, latissimus dorsi, deltoids, then the bicep and the tricep brachii, the wrist flexors, and finally through the fingers to the ball. Engaging more joints would increase the amount of joint reaction force in my hit. Joint reaction force is generated by two bones acting on each other across a joint. An example of of the contact force, joint reaction force, is when I go to jump. The femur and the tibia push against each other through the cartilage located in the knee and thus generating a joint reaction force. As an implication of being unstable and not being able to make force, my vertical jump isn't high. This means that the projectile motion is another one of my biomechanical weaknesses. My angle of release is an implication of being unstable and my inability to make force. Another reason that my hit is ineffective is because of projectile motion. Projectile motion describes the movement of any object that is in the air. Any projectile that is released has vertical and horizontal velocity, as shown by the parabola. The red represents vertical velocity, whilst the blue arrows indicates horizontal velocity. Velocity is a vector quantity, thus meaning it has both direction and magnitude. When tracking the path of my hit, the vertical and horizontal velocity is roughly equal. This means that the ball is soft and loopy. 
This can be corroborated by the qualitative data collected by 10 of my hits. 70% of them were classified as soft and loopy. Going back to the definition of an effective hit that was stated by Volleyball Australia, it means that 70% of my hits were ineffective as they were easy for the opposition to return. A suggested way to improve my stability is to create a bigger base of support because according to Heed, Russell, Weatherby and Williams, the larger the base of support, the greater stability of a person. A predicted outcome of this that is because my base of support is greater, my line of gravity will stay within my base of support. This will allow for me to use more force, enabling me to jump higher. Also, it is suggested that I increase the flexion in the hinge joint in my knee. Not only would it mean that I am engaging the larger muscles in my body, but I can also increase the amount of ground reaction force being used. According to Newton's thought, third law of motion, every action has an equal and opposite reaction. So if I push harder into the ground, the ground will push harder against me, thus making my vertical jump higher. An implication of this is that if, I do, if the angle of release does not change, it may cause my hit to go out beyond the baseline. If I am unable to increase the flexion of the hinge joint in my knee, then a limitation of this is that I have not been able to lower and maximize my stability. I should look to lower my center of gravity. Another alteration to my volleyball hit is to decrease the angle of release. Between me and the professional, there is a massive 68 degrees difference. This means that I need to use less vertical velocity and maximize my horizontal velocity, relying on gravity to bring the ball down. Through implementing my biomechanical modification, there was a change in my volleyball hit, making it more effective. My first biomechanical modification, which was widening my base of support, had a beneficial outcome to my hit, as my line of gravity is within my base of support. This can be seen by analysis of my primary video data. This is significant as it makes me more stable, addressing one of my biomechanical weaknesses. An implication of me being more stable is that I'm able to make more force. This can be seen in the data that was collected from 10 of my hits. In the second lot of data, there are more hits that are classified as moderately hard compared to the original test. After the biomechanical modification was implemented, there was a 20% increase in the amount of hits classified as moderately hard. An implication of my volleyball hit becoming more effective is that it will make my team set and more likely to pass to me. As a result, my team will have two effective hitters, meaning this is less predictable for the opposition. Not only that, but it will make me more effective at the movement strategy of forcing the opposition to use a free ball or non-attacking return. The opposition may struggle to control my hit with the implemented biomechanical modification. A limitation to my biomechanical solution is that I was unable to gain enough vertical height in my jump for my angle of release to be changed enough to match the professional. This is evident in the images shown. However, there was a decrease in the angle of release, making the modification somewhat effective. By analysing my volleyball performance, it was clear that my weak specialised movement sequence was the hit. I have been able to implement a biomechanical modification resulting in my hit becoming more effective. This because I have increased my stability by keeping my line of gravity within my base of support. The biomechanical modification has also meant that I have been able to improve my body and movement concepts of quality of movement and the components of force as I am summating more force in my hit and the body and movement concepts of body awareness and the components of balance and stability as my body is more stable after the modification. This means that I have improved in the movement strategy of forcing the opposition to use a free ball or non-attacking return, a non-attacking return under the principle of play setting up attack.